Prego, accomodatevi. Take a seat. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New York University, Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimò, for the presentation of Serena Dandini's book and performance, Ferite a Morte, Wounded to Death. Uh, Serena has been a friend of the Casa for quite a few years. Um, I know when she's in New York because she normally comes and sits in one of the seats and comes to our events. And I've been courting her for the longest time uh, to come here on the stage. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and finally, we, we had a chance uh, to have Serena here to talk about her recent work. Um, Ferita Morte is a book that uh, Feren Serena wrote with Maura Misiti that you see to her left there, who is a researcher at the uh, National Research Center in Rome. And it's a book that tackles a dramatic and fundamental problem in contemporary society, and not only in contemporary society. There is domestic violence, gender violence, femicide, call it as you wish. It's the, all the situations in which women are mistreated, tortured, killed uh, in any part of the world. And the book is twofold. The first part is an elegy. It's really poetry written in the form of prose, and these are the pieces that Serena wrote. And it's the voice of the women themselves. All these women are dead except one who is a uh, living dead somehow after she lost her children. Uh, and they tell their stories in the first person. These are women from all over the world that lost their lives in different conditions, but with the common denominator of violence directed towards them because women, not for any other reason. And the second part of the book, that is the one curated by Maura Misiti, uh, is a very thorough uh, presentation of data, uh, numbers, uh, social, political, economic phenomena throughout the globe that concern this topic. And so the two things are really compenetrated because none of these stories is exactly the chronicle of any specific fact, but they're all based on real facts, as you can see from, from the second part of the book. From this book, or for this book, uh, Serena also realized the performance that traveled throughout Italy last spring and summer in more than 15 cities, I understand, to incredible success and attention, and is now in the US. She performed at uh, OSA, uh, Organization of American States, in Washington uh, last week, and on Monday, she's going to bring the performance based on Wounded to Death to the United Nations headquarters here in New York. Uh, and with in these performances, Serena invites women, actresses, intellectuals, journalists of all kinds, and she asks these women to give voice to the women that she uh, created for her book. Uh, before I ask Serena a question, I just want to say that it's somehow a heaven, a paradise that Serena created. It's a paradise that is populated only by these wounded women. And it, it made me think of, uh, of uh, Dante in Purgatorio III when he talks about Manfredi. And Manfredi displays very proudly his wounds. And my maestro, uh, Professor John Frecero, who is the most prominent Dante scholar here in the US, wrote about that and said that these wounds are like a map of the life of these people. It's the life of these people that appears through the wounds on their bodies. And Serena corrects Dante because the women in her heaven do not have wounds. The wounds that disfigure them, that kill them, disappear. 
and they regain their beauty and their integrity and their, the integrity of their body. And I thought that only a woman of her depth could do something like that. And uh, my first question is gonna be for Serena, but before I want to present the rest of our panel. To my right, we have Marina Catucci, who is a journalist and a documentarist. And Marina, we invited Marina, bef first of all, because I like her. <laughs> Second thing, because we were their godfathers here at Casa Italiana, we presented for the first time in the US, your first documentary that you realized here. And Marina is in the pre-production phase right now of a documentary called Besame Mucho that is exactly about domestic violence and gender violence, but from the point of view of the perpetrators. So as Serena gives voice to the women, to the victims, or as Marina taught me to say better, the survivors of, in her case, they do not survive. survive. Um, Marina, will explore the voice of the men. That's her project, we're gonna talk about that with her at greater length. To my left there you have uh, Antonio Monda, that as you know is on this stage almost as much as I am. Uh, Antonio teaches uh, cinema here in the Department of Film and Television of New York University. He's also the cultural correspondent for the Italian Daily La Repubblica, but he also writes for uh, Vanity Fair, Vogue and Antonio and a variety of other uh, publications. He just published a beautiful book called Nella Città Nuda, and after having made films, written books, now he also does photography. He's the subject of much envy. Uh, the book has just been presented in Italy, and it's a series of photographs that Antonio took in the New York subway with his iPhone, at the risk of death sometimes. Um, and each story is accompanied very much in the style of what Serena does for the women victims by a story told in the first person that Antonio imagines and attributes to the characters that he meets every day in his rides of the New York subway. We're going to present his book on February 11th here. And Maura Misiti, as I have already mentioned, is a researcher at the Centro Nazionale delle Ricerche, and she devoted uh, the time of, of these last months to the development of this topic and to provide data, collect them, present them in an organic and accessible way. And she did a great job in, in, in this book. Serena Landini doesn't need any introduction, but as you know, she's one of the most prominent TV personalities in Italy. Uh, she created shows from uh, uh, Pippo Kennedy show, Avanzi, La TV delle Ragazze, Parla con me. Uh, and she really created a different way of doing television in Italy. Uh, she starts as a comedian, and she's really funny, uh, but she also showed, as is in the tradition of some TV comedians in Italy, that through comedy, like the Romans taught us, you can tell truths that other people sometimes have problems telling. And the first question is for Serena. How did you get the idea of writing about this book? How did you first got interested in the issue of gender violence and domestic violence. First of all, I have to thank you, he's my hero. <laughs> he's my hero. So, so full of emotion to stay here. And you said so beautiful thing about my work that I'm <laughs> full of emotion, so thank you. It, for me, it's finished also the presentation, I could go home. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but I remain. <laughs> And uh, I answer to your question. I love the Dante, you see. It's too much for me. Eh? <laughs> anyway, I will uh, remember. I write down, write down <laughs> comparison with Dante. And um, I, I, uh, I forgive uh, every time uh, Edgar Lee Master for Spoon River because I took the idea, but Dante <laughs> is the real... Anyway, uh, oh, this book uh, was born because I was very upset. Uh, something um, born for joy, <laughs> something when you, ah, sorry for my English, because I have with the Columbia University <laughs> journalists and so on, so and it's, a, it's, my, it's a personal English, <laughs> but I, th I hope you understand. Um, I was very upset because uh, uh, this uh, huge, enormous drama of uh, uh, domestic violence and feminicide that is the same all around the world 
declined in different cultures, religions, you know, the, every country you go, <laughs> the, the domestic violence you find, <laughs> but you find, you will find. Um, so I was upset because uh, it is a very underestimated problem. I'm sometimes considered like uh, uh, private thing, familiar thing, something that happens between man and woman, uh, wife and husband, don't put something private, so we have to omit nothing, not make the eye, you know? And uh, also, there were a lot of people who were working hard, studying, doing uh, conventions, articles, uh, and studies to explain that it was not uh, a folkloristic <laughs> side effects of a family, but it was a very a, a huge, enormous drama all over the world, and the numbers are terrible. A terrible in Italy, but terrible also here. A terrible west, east, rich, poor, north, south. That's the incredible thing. It's not poor people, uncultured. No, rich people, poor people, uh, degree, non-degree. That is really uh, uh, no continuous, uh, incredible uh, things that we share all over the world. So I was upset because it was underestimated. And I thought uh, maybe through the fiction, through the theater, through the, the trick of the, uh, of the theater, uh, I can arrive to the, to the heart, to the stomach, and then to the brain. And so I, it was just a challenge that I try. And uh, I thought to do like a, a events of a paradise of these uh, women who stay together and finally, talk and tell <laughs> their stories, their life, and in their life, sometimes in the monologues, they, you know the hand, they are all dead, so you know already, like <laughs> in Dante, <laughs> but uh, during the monologue, sometimes you laugh, because the uh, life of women, maybe, uh, not maybe, life of women are more ironic and uh, um, uh, joyful than sometimes the black uh, news, no, articles on newspaper describe and talk only about the dead, the body, and not only in the newspaper, also the TV programs that a uh, uh, little bit, come si dice morboso? Morbid. Morbid, because morbid. No, because morbid at my home soft. is soft. No. Morbid. Sì. Okay. No, anche così. Uh, uh, TV show morbid, very morbid. Uh, <laughs> that talk about these uh, women's like numbers, and they want to know uh, what they eat the, the night before to be killed, or there is a sperm uh, on the. Uh, uh, what is it? Sperm stain on the dress. And the dress and the dress, you know, only talking about this. And they, for me, for to have audience on TV, they kill another time, you know, in some ways. So uh, I was upset of all this, and I try to 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 say these stories and uh, to arrive to the to the stomach, to the hearts with my friend. She did a big work of documentation, and we talk a lot uh, because. Uh, we can sell a real name, a real uh, uh, story. We make from two story one. Uh, we but something happened that we didn't know because the first time we did in theater, and we did because uh, some friends of the uh, Against Violence sh Shelter in Palermo called us to do something about terrible situation happened there, a feminicide of a young. A young girl, very terrible stories. Uh, they want to do something strong, so they call us. Why don't you do? I know that you are writing these monologues. Oh, but I am writing. I'm not still finished. Please come. Do, we do something, and we and we went there. We call old friends, actress and uh, um, journalists, uh, and we call different kind of women to read. Also, a police a police woman from Palermo, uh, very. Uh, strong woman who, who uh, was very, very... Vice Questor, I don't know. No. We have Vice Questor. Deputy Police Chief. The Chief? Deputy. Deputy. 
Schiff. And, uh, no, little bit. Uh, professor, my dream was to be the teaching Anglo-American literature at university, so you think... You still can. <laughs> we will talk later on, huh? And thank you, anyway. Uh, and so we went there and we did it, and I was very full of emotion because I thought, oh God, I call all this big actress and person and, and important woman to, to read these things in front of audience very big in the Teatro Biondo, I want to kill me, maybe it's a mess. And in effect happened something magic, very full of emotion, a, a, a chemistry between the audience and the readers. Uh, they laugh and they cry, <laughs> they laugh and they cry. And then they come backstage and say, uh, uh, also me happened this thing, also me, because behind the dramatic hand, everybody recognize himself in the small part of the story, because all we are part of the same culture that we have to change. It's the culture of homophobic culture, it's the culture of bullism, I don't know what you say, but... Bullism. Facilissimo, bullism. Uh, morbid. Bullism. <laughs> it's the same culture, it's the wrong culture that we have to change all together. Male, and women. So that's, uh, I very become upset when they say it is a women issue. It's not a women issue. It's a, a, a man issue, <laughs> but also a man and women issue. We have to do together. And also the man, very far from violence attitude, has to be uh, involved in this struggle with us. If not, we don't arrive in any place. And we'll talk about that more at length with Marina. <laughs> but uh, since um, Serena also mentioned the numbers, I would like to, to ask Maura. Um, one of the... Glielo <laughs> perdoniamo. One of the, of the common places, and, and reading uh, Serena book I understood, how many assumptions I made regarding to this topic that are completely void of any foundation. And then with a little chat that I had with Marina to give me sort of an update on things, I realized that I, I knew very little and the little I knew was kind of distorted, my vision of the whole phenomenon. Uh, one of the things is there are, there are no really social barrier. It's no. lower class, middle class, the rich and the poor, the left and the right. Uh, and of course, it cuts across geographical lines. Um, so we could say that it's a universal phenomenon. At the same time, in your uh, section of the book, you sort of single out some critical geographical areas in which the phenomenon takes specific uh, embodiments, specific aspects. Uh, why don't you tell us something that, what makes it a universal phenomenon across the board, across geographic borders, age, social class, and what makes it specific in some of its manifestation to specific geographical areas? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, mm, the answer is quite simple because it's in the uh, definition of uh, femicide and definition of uh, gender violence. When you say gender violence and when you say femicide, you refer to a specific phenomenon uh, that is the gender. Uh, femicide is very synthetic uh, way. It's uh, the killing of a woman because it's a woman. So this is the answer. Uh, this is the fact that um, link all the cultures and geographical. And if you uh, see the, well, uh, about the data and the uh, um, estimation of the phenomenon, in fact, um, violence against women, it's quite a hidden phenomenon, also from the statistical and research point of view. Uh, I mean, mm, it's very difficult. W what's what happened in Italy is quite incredible because the feeling is that Italy is a sort of country where, 
women are killed every day. But it, this is the result of something very important that is awareness, that is uh, that for the first time the word femicide in Italiano, feminicidio, uh, is taught, is written, is became something that exists. Mm? Uh, mainly, I mean, by the work of uh, the advocacy, the feminist uh, movement, the anti-violence, uh, I mean, networks and organizations that are very strong all over the world, I mean, more or less, but in Italy, the movement is, is quite strong. And, uh, mm, and the phenomenon became real. Uh, in fact, statistical data are a problem because how you monitor and you evaluate something that uh, in the experience and the, the, the few, uh, I mean, surveys, the surveys we are used to do, uh, if you interview, I mean, general population, you have 90% of the women that say, yes, I have been uh, involved once in my life, at least. Uh, in, Ita in Italy, the results are 10 million of women are been involved at least once in, in their life in uh, uh, violence, in mm, some way. Mainly inside the family, I mean 90% in the family. Uh, yes, yes, but... Uh, Yes, but uh, the fact is um, that um, this. Oddio, ho perso il filo. Miseria, una cosa perfetta. Porca miseria. Ah, they <laughs> they don't report. I mean, only on <laughs> yeah, tutto organ. Um, <laughs> a very small part of the victims uh, report their violence. So it's an hidden phenomenon. So y y we don't know, we have to estimate it. Uh, and the femicide more, because we don't have, we have a more or less international definition of what gender violence is at different forms of violence. But femicide, yes, after this very simple definition, it's quite difficult to define. Because, uh, yes, it's the killing of a woman, but not all the homicides where the victim is a woman are femicides. And not only in other, I mean, researchers, uh, um, uh, not only women victims uh, are in the count of femicides, because you can count also the suicides of the men, the authors, for example, or the people involved different ways, I mean, children, but I mean, people around and so on. So there are different ways to uh, mm, evaluate femicide. So data are quite, but the data we have, and we have because uh, last July, uh, the World Health uh, Organization uh, published a, a, a new report, uh, and they say that uh, the worldwide, the 35 percent of the women of the world uh, have been victim of one form of violence. And the stories are, uh, we say, the, the femicide is, is in, it, it's horrible because it's the, it's the fatal. Uh, accident, but uh, in general, and in, in the majority of, of the cases, is the, the end of a long history of violence uh, in uh, a sort of growing circle of uh, violence. Uh, and the stories can be also very, very long. Um, so, femicide is it's something horrible because somebody die, but the, <laughs> the real problem is violence, in mainly in, in the intimate relationship, and we can speak. Maura, the specific 
uh, incarnations of these gender violence in different parts of the world. Say, of course, femicide is the top of the iceberg. It's not even always reported, but at the same time, it's chronica. It's on the papers because there is a killing and so on. But give us some examples. For example, uh, the whole issue about the women victims of unpaid dowries. I had no idea that that existed. Uh, we know something more about the eugenetic abortion of girls in different parts of Asia. Give us just two, three examples well, like this, just to give a sense sorry, of Sorry, because I mean, um, it, there are official definitions of uh, uh, violence against women, and the um, special rapporteur of United Nations on violence uh, against women uh, last two years ago uh, in, in, in her last report um, summarized the different forms uh, of the violence against women uh, all over the world. So um, in, in our selection of cases, because uh, w w yes, we try to select the most uh, different just to uh, show how can be different the, the, the form of violence eh? and related and linked to religion or culture, but linked of this very problem that is the in, um, unequal uh, distribution, I mean, of the power in society among men and women. I Thank you. I the perfect. <laughs> Antonio. Uh, from uh, from the data and this general overview about the situation of uh, domestic and gender violence in the world from Maura, uh, I wanted to ask in your capacity as a film critic and a film professor uh, a, a very simple question. Cinema as literature, as we know, portrays situations, historical realities, and at the same time, in some cases, is a factor of change. Uh, one case in point would be uh, divorce Italian style, divorzio italiana that uh, presented to the large public and to an international audience the infamous Delito d'Onore that was present in the uh, Italian criminal code rock of in the 30s. And in, in, in a comedy, in a dark comedy, but a comedy nonetheless, that helped bring the issue of gender violence to center stage in the political debate in Italy and ultimately brought to the abolition of the crime. In other cases, cinema presents undeniable situations of gender violence, domestic violence. And my question is, does it always act as a factor of change and denounce, or sometimes it ends up glorifying these situations? And with Antonio, we'll have two clips, I'll so whenever you're ready. I will try to respond, but first let me congratulate Serena and Maura for this great achievement. I think one of the most impressive things in their work is that uh, the perfect blend of uh, pietas and, uh, and social and scientific research. Congratulations. Now I'll try to respond. Uh, I think that uh, it goes both ways. Uh, generally, filmmakers are attracted, uh, although, you know, it's horrifying what happens inside domestic uh, <coughs> sorry, worlds or everywhere happens uh, uh, violence against women. But in, in pure dramatic terms, the material is interesting. It's powerful. It's strong. Although horrifying. I know that. Uh, let's see how different the approach can be in, uh, from, from different filmmakers. You have uh, filmmakers, screenwriters, playwriters, who use violence against women as a, a metaphor. And uh, you have filmmakers who use violence against women as a, 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 a tool to trigger revenge. And you have uh, also someone who demonstrates pure cruelty, which is probably the most horrifying. And, and goes exactly in the, uh, in the words that you just uh, use of feminicidio, uh, to, to abuse or, or use violence against a woman because he's a woman. Uh, but let me be a little bit more specific. Think of a film uh, such as um, Clockwork Orange, which I think is an extraordinary film. In the film, you have two different rapes. One of the two ends into a, a murder also. 
One is, uh, uh, in which, by the way, mirrors the horror that happened to the wife, the first wife of the writer, Anthony Burgess, who was raped during World War II by a group of soldiers while singing, singing in the rain. This is mirrored in the film and in the book, of course. But there is a second uh, rape scene where uh, Alex, who is the protagonist in the film, is the actor Malcolm McDowell, rapes and then kill a woman using uh, a huge, large penis. Do you remember that scene? Which is a sculpture that this woman has in her apartment. Clearly, it's a symbol, that huge penis that uh, Alex wants to use. And it's uh, very, very disturbing, not only for the violence of the scene, but also, and this is quite interesting, because Kubrick, and before him, uh, Burgess, doesn't do anything to make this woman uh, sympathetic. She's not nice at all which is even more disturbing, in a sense. Um, the second, uh, uh, um, the second uh, example that I would like to, to remember here is the film The Accused with Jodie Foster. You might remember this, and Kelly McDowell. Uh, this is a typical, uh, it's a, a very strong film uh, that wants to show how horrible is this act, but also uh, it's a film that wants to uh, deliver a message. Uh, in, term, in artistic terms, it's less powerful, less interesting, but in another sense, it's even nobler than the previous one. The third example is, and I would like to screen a clip, uh, actually two clips, uh, is what I call uh, rape or violence as inevitable, quote-unquote, act. Let's see a, a brief clip from A Streetcar Named Desire, a great play by Tennessee Williams, uh, Williams directed both on stage and on the screen by the great Elia Kazan. This is a scene with uh, Marlon Brando. And let's watch it and then. <coughs> Nobody can beat Marlon Brando, I think. No, the greatest you know, actor of all time, do you agree? If you put Marlon Brando. Uh, I know. <laughs> 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 My point is, this is what I call the inevitable, let me use this expression, uh, uh, violence. Uh, what I say is, of course, not by <coughs> I'll try to explain. Of course, I'm not endorsing violence at all. I'm not justifying it at all. But what C. Williams is trying to demonstrate that uh, human beings, and in particular men, are brutal, fragile, and sooner or later this violence explodes in one way or in another. He is not justifying, I'm not justifying, but uh, there is no redemption in these stories. In fact, as you remember, the story ends with uh, the girl getting finally uh, going to an, uh, an asylum. She's getting crazy, completely insane. Uh, because the violence, often hidden and sometimes exploding, as in these uh, scenes, makes her uh, become fragile, more fragile and fragile, and then finally becoming insane. Uh, to it's find. It's very attractive because the more uh, fragile, the more fragile she fragile. fragile. I was wrong, you were right. <laughs> Absolutely. And I would like now to <coughs> to s to screen a final sequence, which is from another great film, La Strada by Federico Fellini. You all remember the story of Gelsomina, played by Giulietta Masina, and Zampano, played by the great Anthony Quinn. It's a story of violence. Uh, but with a complete different ending, which makes this film particularly interesting for us. The film was made seven years after uh, the previous film. Actually, uh, seven years after the, the play was written and three years after the, made, uh, the film was made. Let's watch it. 1954. What is the great difference between the two scenes and these two films? Uh, the first one ends <coughs> in desperation, craziness, asylum, this ends with the death, with the death of, of Gelsomina. I, I hope I don't reveal anything. It's a film that is almost 60 years old. <laughs> but this brings to... <laughs> I'm not spoiling the film. But this brings, or at least open to do the door to redemption. This is the great difference. Once again, nobody's endorsing what Zampano does. He, he keeps abusing and abusing and sometimes beating poor Gelsomina. But the difference is that her death opens the door to redemption. So you have different kinds of abuse. All of those <coughs> acts of violence, even when violence is not shown, it's only psychological violence, 
Think of the great Hollywood films of the 50s, Notorious, Gaslight. You remember Gaslight with Ingrid Bergman and, and many, many, many others. When there is not a single gesture of violence, but is extremely violent what happened in terms of psychological, psychological abuse. I'm sorry, I've also jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <coughs> so the big difference is how do you end this? Violence that brings only desperation, violence that, then, that leads to revenge. Fellini tells us that there is also a third and possibly hopeful uh, solution, which is redemption. It's very, very interesting. We have to do an entire uh, course with Why violence and movies. But what about Kill Bill? <laughs> Okay, I'm not a huge Tarantino fan. I and, know, and that's... And, the <laughs> and, and this will probably make me less popular in this room. <laughs> Although I adore Jackie Brown, his uh, third film. Uh, because, uh, you, you no, because Tarantino is a hugely, hugely talented filmmaker. There is no doubt about it. But he's always making fun of us, of the audience, of movies, of people. I mean, how serious can be a film where uh, Hitler is killed in a bombing or... What? No, I'm, t I'm talking about the, 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 the big no, no, revenge, I know, I know, but the big revenge of the he, woman. I know, I know very well. That. <laughs> but if you, uh, if your attitude is making fun of everything, I don't take him. I don't take him seriously, even when he does uh, uh, a film where uh, what's her name, Uma Thurman, who is fantastic in the film, gets revenge. It's all a joke. From it's this, in joke. another in another lesson, we can stay one hour to discuss. Oh, I, I I will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Violi Thank you, viol Thank you Domestic and gender violence in cinema. Next topic. <laughs> uh, but I want to move to Marina. Uh, Marina, as I mentioned, is a journalist, Marina Catucci, and a documentarist. Uh, and the documentary she's working on right now is called Besame Mucho. <laughs> and it's a documentary that she will shoot entirely in the US. And it will try to tell stories similar to the stories that Serena tells in, in her book and in the performance from it, but from the point of view of the perpetrators. And Marina, you have gone through Italy and the US already presenting your project. There is a beautiful website for Besame Mucho, and I invite you to visit it and contribute to it because she's looking for funds because it was very hard for her to find producers, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, and you already had like town hall meetings where you expose your idea. And very often you encounter diffidence and people say, why do you want to know the opinion of these people? They're horrible. We don't need to. Why do you want to tell these stories from the point of view of the perpetrators? So the reason is again, was the beginning was like for Serena, the rage. You know, when you read the newspaper, you hear all this story. At a certain point, in my case, I wanted to understand the origin of everything. Uh, so the victims, so the survivors, are the person there. Mm, it's not this one, the origin. The origin is the male part of the couple, the one that start this circle of violence. So when I decide to, to make a documentary about these topics, because I'm a documentarist, so this is what I do, and uh, I, I decide to um, call the my producer, the one that produced all my documentary, and there are more than one, and I was so shocked because I received all the same answer. And the answer was, you have to show women crying. Without wow. women crying, we cannot sell this documentary. More or less was the answer. Someone was more direct, some other was less direct, but this was the answer. So I decided to put the project online. I opened a Kickstarter and I was again surprised in this case in a positive way because I received a lot of donation, a lot of phone call, uh, a lot of interview, uh, all, all the newspaper in Italy, some newspaper even here in the US, they write articles about my project. And then through the website, I also start to receive a lot of email from women, women that was talk with me, uh, maybe happened to you too, telling us their story. And so I start to think about that. So if someone have to write to a website to someone else that doesn't know at all to tell their story, so s with full of sufferance, full of, mm, full of herself, this is means that maybe we don't have enough shelter structure to... And Marina, you're talking about women that are victims or survivors of domestic abuse, of domestic yes, abuse and exactly. violence. 
writing to you to tell you their story exactly. from the website from in which you're explaining your project. Yeah. Uh, the, this is uh, exactly uh, with the no lack answer, answer, the lack of answer. This uh, was two parts. So I started to do conferences about these topics, and then I was shocked again. It's all story of shock. This one, I was so shocked. I was yeah, yeah, all the time, <laughs> night and day. Yeah. Because a lot of persons they asked me what the same question it was, but you justify an abuser trying to explain their point of view. No, the answer of course is not. It's like to make a research to study the virus of AIDS it doesn't mean you wanna justify AIDS. I wanna study this phenomenon. I wanna to understand why one gender to feel better, and then also don't feel better, need to go against the other genders. Why someone, they have to be against the, pe the person that is, is supposed to love, yeah. is supposed to care about it, and not to attack. And so I start to study, it now is almost one year they study this problem, these topics, and then I discovered that it's no, it's not just a Ken Loach kind of movie. It's not happened just <laughs> over, this kind of class, but it's a very a democratic phenomenon. Can happen in high level of cultural level, in a social level or low level, and all over the world. And this is true. It's not exactly the same kind of things because of different declination in every nation, but it's the same pattern. It's three steps. Let's the first one: the seduction, isolation, and then the abuse. Exactly the same all over the world. So this is a virus. This, uh, this, is, this is very important. I wanted to ask Serena, when you heard, and, and I know you met Marina before, when you heard about her project, what did you think? Were you curious about what was going on in the mind of the perpetrators or of your victims that we said, of course, they are partly creations of your fantasy, but they're partly based on very, very real stories. Uh, did that trigger your curiosity about the, the mental process they, they went through? A lot. It's part of the work. It's uh, the part of our work. There is a, a very interesting book that maybe you, you read in, uh, in Italian from a, a journalist, uh, Riccardo Iacona. Uh, it just uh, make a research fr from a point of view of a man, and he interviewed men and with more very very interesting, and I take inspiration from some of these interview for writing some of, uh, because there is also men in my monologue, because women talk about men, so it's very important, the other point of view. And there is, uh, um, some in one um, uh, monologue I wrote, it's called, called uh, um, se chiama? Quote Rosa. Vabbè. Uh, Yes, uh, it's a story of a, a woman who's a manager. She's a manager, and she said, "Is no, it's very difficult to become a manager for a woman. We have to work twice and uh, more than men." But at last, I, I got it. Uh, I didn't have children because I want to do my career, and uh, and I uh, marry a man. Uh, doing the same work, so it's so beautiful to understand each other in the evening. Look at the iBook, the iPad, the email together, and so on. <laughs> or the Blackberry, because somebody was the Blackberry. I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, they said everything was very nice. I, 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 but I, mean, I put a lot of time to gain the same money of him because, you know, woman at the same curriculum, has to do an effort. Huh? So at the last, I, we were the same uh, wage. The problem is that then I become to gain more money than him. At that point, everything was broken. He became to be not so nice with me, become to be very, and so on, the story goes on, and. Uh, uh, until the end. The end, you know, but it's not important then. It's important that she was afraid, sh ashamed at, at the beginning to tell him that he was gaining more money than him because she was sure to humil humiliate him. And um, also, uh, she understand 
his reason, that's it's interesting. He said, I understand that it was too much for him. I was too much for him. And it, it didn't help because I wrote an interview of a man who said, she, she, was, she became too much, the real words of this man, she became too much uh, for me. I, um, I, it was difficult for me to approach her. She was talking so well. She's so good with words. And I have a very big difficulty to stay her, uh, her same passo, pace. So at the end, she said, I understand him. The only thing he could do at the hand is beat me because with the, with the, with the strength, he is still a, stronger than me. It's the only, and it was true words. Can I say something? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned before the horrible TV shows that exploit this kind of uh, uh, <coughs> phenomenon, sad phenomenon. Uh, a few years ago, I saw an ad and then uh, an article about this ad, who attacked the ad. And the ad was selling the shirts that Marlon Brando uses in this film. Uh, not in this particular scene, but you remember it's a yeah, t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 not in that one. <laughs> and you know the way the t-shirt was called in the ad? Wife beater t-shirt. It was used as an ad. Wife, wife beater. So if we accept this kind of cynicism, I mean, there is very little we can do. The second thing that I learned, and I want to thank you in particular for this, and also what Magina just said, I didn't know, and I just learned that it's a very democratic, if I can use your expression, phenomenon. Uh, my impression before reading and, and, and dealing with it was that was something confined mainly in, in um, lower middle class or where desperation, economic desperation lies. It's not true, uh, which uh, tells us a lot about uh, human nature and about frustration and rage against weaker person, in particular women, even when you're rich or wealthy. But uh, it's not only class or wealth, but it's also culture. And I think one of the most striking uh, experiences you had while receiving this email was from a particular woman who told you her story. And Maybe you want to tell us about that. One of the first mail that I received was um, she was uh, she's still a um, writer. Uh, her former husband, ex-husband, uh, is a psychotherapist. So, <laughs> so uh, they was together for more than ten years. Yeah, she was the wife of a psychotherapist. He was the abuser. You know? And so for her was uh, in this case, it's much more difficult. Terrible because the 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 psychiatrist abuse you, convince you that you yourself oh, you need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a loop. Yes. No, no. Now this story is, is shocked because uh, when you're in this level, cultural level, more than economical level, no, is you start to think if I look at the situation from the outside, this is a situation of domestic violence, but because it's us, cannot be these things, because it's not our class, it's not our culture to act in this way. And so you realize really late, so this is a case of the longer abuse that happened in this kind of situation. And so the other things, uh, another part of the abuse, the, the mental abuse is, is uh, abnormal, is unbelievable, no, is to push her to mm, Isolation. You're, yeah, to be yeah. isolated, yeah. Yeah. you're the crazy one. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the right each side. Each that's not that's <laughs> yeah. normal. Absolutely. That's, yeah. When he was talking, thinking about each cock movie, I was thinking about the same. Yeah. No. That explains why it, it is a hidden phenomenon because it's very difficult. Psychological violence means everything, and it's very difficult to report because y you don't understand if it's normal the situation you are. Uh, living, and, uh, but no, it is an abuse. But the thing I would like to add uh, about the mm, Marina approach <laughs> is it's so important that I would like to add some info about the, um, I mean, conventions and uh, at the how institutional government reacts. And in particular, we we are very 
proud because in Europe and Italy in particular is uh, the first of the big uh, European countries that ratified the Istanbul Convention, less known probably here than in Europe. That is a very important convention. We are waiting that uh, other three um, member states, yeah, no, they have to be, no, now we are five, and we are waiting for other three become b b before the convention uh, enter in force. Mm. So, well, what is very important in this convention uh, is uh, the approach is uh, mostly on prevention um, and not at also on the support and the contrast, uh, obviously. But this is very important because it's a different perspective, uh, understanding that the problem is something that we have to discuss and to have to clarify and to have to see in our society and in the relationship. And one of the points very qualifying of the convention is the um, invitation to the member state to organize uh, actions to for the perpetrators. Uh, this is in the plan of the, the uh, in Istanbul Convention, together with other very potent actions, uh, uh, raising awareness and uh, collecting data. That's very important because uh, nobody knows nothing about the phenomenon. Very few, I mean. And uh, I want, yes, it's very important, this side of the problem, but because it's in the problem, not outside. It's not the enemy. <laughs> it's some, something that we have to focus. Going back to, to Serena and to uh, Ferite a Morte, so it was born originally as a theatrical performance. You wrote this book knowing that it would become a, a performance. Can you open the microphone? And we said you, you brought the show to about 15 cities in Italy. I wanted to know, first of all, the reactions that you got. Um, is, as Marina said in, in our conversation, a lot of women write, no men write. It seems it's not their problem. And that's one more reason, I believe, because your project is relevant. Because it's, as you said, it's both sides' problem. Uh, so the reactions you had to the performance in Italy, and whether you saw the same thing, that men tend to think that this is a, a women issue. Yep. One thing to your question. If you notice also any difference between South and North in your performance in Sicilia, Piemonte, Calabria, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the reaction. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, first of all, I answer, excuse me, to my colleague. <laughs> <laughs> No, there is no different reaction between North and South. It's incredible, incredible. Because we go to Padova, to Palermo, to... Uh, that's very interesting, because uh, tell you a lot about it. And uh, I, can, I can say a funny thing, because the first time in Palermo, at the end of the show, the barman of the theater come to us in the backstage and say, Wow, I finish all the liquors. <laughs> I said, thank you very much. <laughs> you come back again to, with this... Uh, <laughs> I, we don't know. Is, uh, but because uh, the men, <laughs> after the show, <laughs> they drank, because it was very strong emotion, impression. So this is uh, not maybe funny things, but demonstrate that you arrived in some way and something going around, no? and also naturally we have a, a lot of uh, women who after the show came, also men uh, behind the scenes and want to talk and want to say and they need to say and that's one of the things that really uh, make me happy because one of the reasons I, no, I wrote these things is just for give voice uh, to the live people <laughs> that can still talk, and they have to talk, no? They don't keep inside. So talking is uh, coming to go in the right street. Then you have to walk a lot, but 
it's important to begin to stay in the right path. Thank you, Serena. We don't have much time, but I wanted to open the discussion to the floor. If, if you have any question for Serena Dandini or any other of our guests on the panel, it's your chance. The gentleman back there. Elsa, grazie. Poi, poi diamo, prendi Laura. Io adoro fare il ballettismo. Chi, Chiara? Hello. Hi. Uh, I would like to, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you. Ciao. Um, come on. Let's show off a little bit. Um, I would like to know if the reaction changed. Because is nowadays in Italy, there is not a lot of talk, but you know they're t starting to talk about this. And uh, so there are news about this. So the reaction, I remember that Paola Minaccioni told me the first show she did. Yeah. She, I'm going to Palermo to do this show on it. Ah, yeah. 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 And I remember, for now I remember that. La since then, domanda. yes, sorry. Since then, there was a, a change in a reaction because there are also media talking about this when you do the show? Uh, we have to be careful. We, we say it each other to Maura because uh, it's the, the danger always is could be a fashion. No? Transforming a fashion. Now it's very in now to talk about feminicide. No, uh, you tell the story. Yeah. She, she made an interview with a, uh, a journalist from Holland. Yeah. And uh, this journalist, uh, in, uh, the first question was uh, you in Italy. Well, she was horrified. She wrote me a letter. And, uh, well, I, I want to write something on Italy because Italy is uh, on the back of, uh, you know, Italian men. They are so sweet. Uh, I love Italian men. But, well, the situation in Italy is, uh, is very serious, and I know I don't know I, do, I can't understand why, etc., etc., etc. And she answered <laughs> the difference. So we talk about it. You know, my your man do the same. No, no, because well, the, no. the statistics are or similar. No, no. The 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 fact is that the mm, we have few data, but mm, some uh, French colleagues try to estimate and compare. Um, the few data on femicides in Europe, and in fact, Italy is very low in the rank. Uh, I mean, at the rank, at the end of the rank, and uh, there are all the northern countries of Europe uh, are, yeah, a, a, a big prevalence. So Maura told her. <laughs> so, no, I uh, try to explain wh what's happened in Italy. Uh, the first thing, uh, what I, uh, I, I said before, th th a fourth push of movements and uh, um, attention and uh, really uh, big movement uh, of women mainly. Uh, mainly, but also men, because we have new men's organization, Maschile Provale, maybe, you know. I uh, and, and then and uh, in, in, uh, we, we stay uh, in Washington le last week to, to do with, uh, we did a reading with all the women from North and South America, from Canada to Patagonia. It was very interesting no? meeting, very interesting women, very interesting situation. And the American women of the North America, um, they said, we are embarrassed to talk about this because, uh, oh, Everybody knows we have a lot, but nobody it's talks huge. because it's a huge problem. It's something that you shamed. Yeah. So we were very. So maybe we now in Italy we talk a lot about this, yeah. and it's a good thing. But the other side is that a, 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 a sort of manipulation huh, of the information, and well, we 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 can to say it's something very. Morbid. morbid, so very attractive for for media. Mm? So the fact is, it, I, I think it's a, a perfect explication of what is happening on on the simple word femicide. Yesterday or two days ago, uh, we had the final um, the motivation of the Ruby 
trial in Italy, and the reaction. You know Ruby. You know Ruby, mm, Berlusconi, Ruby, the young uh, Moroccan girl. Yeah, Ruby. <laughs> yeah. And Everybody knows, like uh, Maradona, uh, Totti. All over the world, yeah, Papa. Um, no, the reaction of, of uh, uh, Daniela Santanquet, that is a right-wing uh, representative, or a political representative, she told, this is the, a femicide of a political man no, no, no. the feminicide of Ruby. Of Ruby. Of the Ruby. judge ah. uh, did uh, a feminicide in the... Uh, no, no, in come down in uh, Ruby and Berlusconi because the poor girl only accepted gift from a, a, a man. So uh, they judge her and put her on the public oh, opinion. Man. A poor man, I, I say the poor man. The <laughs> she <doesn't laughs> anyway, you say, no. she said uh, this was an act of feminicide from the judge against, against, against Ruby. Ruby. So this is the perfect example of what is happening of the word. Now, now everybody uses this word in this uh, way. No? So it's important. It's dangerous. Th well, but. So it's very dangerous. So what is important, and I see our experience shows very well, it's very important to uh, have a correct approach because this topic is quite dangerous because it's, you know, it's very m open. And also the correct approach is stay very near to the people who is working from here in the dark and the backstage, the, the against violence shelter, we, we work a lot with these women because they know how the approach. And it's very important don't be, no, must stay together. Uh, we have Marina wants to say something and then we'll take the next question. Yes, this is absolutely true. It's a very delicate moment. What I'm afraid during those days is uh, November 25th is approaching. No? The this is the reason because uh, in Nigeria, you hear uh, the International Day Against Violence Against Women. No? I'm so afraid that it become an, a new automarzo, uh, something in this way. I really wish March 8th, March 8th, 8th the International Day, Day for Women. No? So when uh, they exchange mimosa, exchanging flowers, these kind of things. And then I, what I wish is become a day for men, for men, because the, the, the topic, not just to make them guilty, not for this kind of approach, but just to understand it's, a, it's both gender problem. It's not one gender problem. Yes, next question. Uh, yeah, you know, um, Maura, earlier you mentioned the idea, um, the definition of this term as because she's a woman, that's why this happens, because she's a woman. And it seems to me like that kind of opens up, it kind of begs the question, what does that really mean, because she's a woman, right? Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out to the panel, to Mauro, to the rest of you, and in particular to the professor, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, about this idea of, you know, men being dominant through uh, physical force, as opposed to other things, and I'm thinking of, talking about films, uh, Swept Away, Wart Miller, right? We're in the court of, on the island in Eden, the natural state of things is that the man is physically dominant. That's how he gains dominance, because when he's on the boat, he's economically inferior. Um, so it's just interesting that you defined it, this, this idea of killing women because they're a woman. You know, what, what's the greater, greater meaning of that? Um, well, United Nations defines um, violence against women as a violation of uh, basic uh, rights, women, um, human rights. Adesso jet lag comincia a avere gli effetti l'età. So, um, it's gender violence, it's, uh, it's something that is inside. Uh, it's exactly what you, uh, men dominated, do dominated all society, are still dominating 
uh, the majority of society, you know, the struggle, you know, that it's under our uh, eyes, uh, the, um, uh, the efforts to gender empowerment, gender mainstreaming, gender pay gap, uh, gender divide, uh, you know, because the uh, inequalities are clear and are the roots of the violence. Uh, and also, we live uh, in uh, cultural stereotypes and really gendered. And uh, so the problem is to start, and this way I, I, I really agree, uh, to think um, one more time what does it mean for a man and for a woman are an intimate relationship. What you ex uh, expect from a man or from a woman, because this is the problem. Uh, the ori one of the origins of the violence, of the cycle, the violence, is uh, where your partner uh, is not um, mm, attached, stick to the mm, role you expect from her. That's the start of the violence. So this is the problem. And you can find it in all societies, in different forms, but in all societies. Thank you for clarifying this. Just very briefly to the gentleman, since he mentioned uh, swept away, uh, the Italian title is Travolti da un insolito destino. Uh, I think that Werk Müller in that film was more interested in class contrast than more than sex. However, uh, there is a, a, a very disturbing moment where the actress, Mariangela Melato, who plays, as you might remember, an high-class Milanese woman, uh, asks, actually begs her sailor to be sodomized, which is uh, very, very, very disturbing. But again, the, the film is more about class than, than about sex. Uh, absolutely, yes, but it starts from the class situation, not from the... Just one last question, yes, um, Actually, I have two small questions. Yes, the, f the, the first one is, uh, um, if uh, writing the book, you had in mind some literary model or like other like writings about this kind of things, so or about like women, uh, uh, not only violence, but you know, reading the book, uh, it, it came to my mind other books. So I would like to know if you had something in mind. And the second question is, um, if you had uh, any uh, negative uh, reaction, because I was following uh, a lot this kind of phenomenon in the newspaper, and I also saw that I think uh, if I'm not wrong, the Casa delle Donne uh, from Bologna, when they put in their website all the results of the, of the numbers, they had incredibly violent reaction and they had to close the comments because they were too violent. So the public debate about this uh, phenomenon, it's uh, quite difficult and there is a like, kind of movement that is a negazionismo about what's going on. So I would like to know uh, if uh, you had a negative reaction and uh, if you have a literary model. Uh, of course, uh, and it's a very interesting question. Uh, negazionism is always uh, uh, around us. Also, journalists, very important, wrote articles uh, uh, saying uh, everybody, everybody is killed. Why? Don't make all this uh, uh, tragedy about this. Fed up about uh, too much. Be and because the number, also the homicidi, come si dice? Homicide, certo. Uh, the homicide are, are going down in the statistic. No? So they say this. The homicide is going down in Italy, but if you divide and look into the dates, you see that the, the, the homicide man to man is going down. The homicide, the feminicide are the same number for in 100 here. So it means that we did nothing about this problem. The same number. So no, we just... This so that's the one also answer to him. Um, women are not always beautiful person. We are strong, so I don't know how to say. <laughs> Bitches. Bitches. No, ma that's not a reason to kill us.
Ah, uh, uh, literary models, but I, I, I use, I steal the trick of uh, Edgar Lee Master uh, Spoon River, and then I, I don't know, really, I don't know. I do this question to my guest when I say, <laughs> no? what is your literature? Now I know this is a terrible question because <laughs> <laughs> I will never do it in my life anymore when I'll have a guest. <laughs> because really, I love uh, literature from uh, Dorothy Parker to Harry James, uh, from uh, uh, Alice Munro to I don't know. So it's difficult to, to say really what uh, melting pot inside your no, brain and, and, and body comes out when you begin to write. Really, it's difficult. I can tell you the trick of Spoon River at Galley Master, but the style is nothing to do with if you have uh, already read the, 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 the great poet. And Serena, and since you're talking about your style from Alessandro Montalbano's question, I would like to close this evening with you reading one of the stories, Fior di Lotto, Ton? Eh, ma me, really? No, no? Sì, no ma me l'ho scordato. Quello racconti, io la legge. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. No, because he told me before, but I thought it was late now. No, no, no. I no. forgot it. I think it's, 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 no, it's, it's, it's good to finish. <laughs> Sorry, we are friend. Uh, uh, what are you doing in English? Uh? <laughs> anyway, it's one of the small ones, eh? Quick thing. Lotus flower. The air so nice and crisp in the morning when you leave the house early and pass by the market stalls before the vendors have finished piling up their flowers in those sweet-smelling pyramids. I walked through the crowds of Peshawar in my school uniform with my head held high, looking proud at a little soldier. Except the only weapons in the hands of my army of young women are good intentions and profound desire to change. If not quite the world, then at least their own destiny. I was going to graduate that June and, against the wishes of everyone in my family, enrolled to study law at Bangalore University in India. I'd always dream of becoming a lawyer, though every night my mother prayed I would change my mind. Girls who want to study face huge risk in my country. It's less dangerous to be a prostitute here. Funny, isn't it? Two men on a motorcycle stopped our school bus, got and shot me in the head. The Taliban have got it right. They understand that educated women really can change the world. So they kill us off before we even graduate. With dramatic execution, serve as a warning to us all to close our book forever. I hear that in Bangalore, the magic touch of Lotus Cellar can open up a closed bud, making it blossom onto the world. Me, I'll never be able to blossom, but I have no fear. I may have lost my battle, but my classmates have not given up. They are keeping up the fight, hiding their school uniforms and notebooks underneath their shawls. They may pretend not to know how much, but they are already winning the war. And this, this beautiful short story is inspired to the real story of Malala that, as you know, moved this country during her recent visit. It's different, there are circumstances. No, just because that, um, yes. is, is that, and, but then we know Malala and the fantastic survivor, but a lot of girls continually uh, has been shot in, in, yeah. in, a, in a bus, completely a woman. So, I would like to remember, and for me, Ma Malala uh, survived. Represents, yeah. yes. And uh, but we, are the others we are gonna close with our last clip of the evening, and it's Malala on the Daily Show with John Stewart, again a comedian, very much like Serena, who does something that is very relevant, telling truths that you don't hear in other news stories. And I invite you to. Um, watch the clip with us. Serena hasn't seen it yet. And I would like to thank once again 
uh, Antonio Monda, Maura Misiti, Marina Catucci, and of course, wish the best of luck to Serena Dandini for her representation of Wounded to Heart.